Sorry about the uber long wait in between videos guys. Life is pretty crazy right now and I hopefully am able to share the information with you in the next coming weeks. I've been using Nova Launcher on a lot of smartphones for the past three years, usually covering up the kind of bloated and not very nice looking skins and launchers that come with stock phones. For example, I used Nova on the Pocophone F1, I used it on the Huawei P20 and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. But Nova's very good and I really like it. I've even got the pro version, the paid version, but it's very boring and I feel like I want to try something else. So today I'm going to be looking at five alternatives that are free because I'm not going to go and spend money on them. Hey guys, my name's Ryan Thomas and today I'm ditching Nova. The first item on this list is Eevee. Kelsey pointed me to Eevee a few months ago now and I've only really just got around to using it. The launcher itself is pretty plain on the surface. The home screen has no funky features, not even a dock by default. The app draw IMO looks really good. Whilst you can get into grid mode, it defaults to this list look which keeps the background blurred at low brightness and presents your applications in this super clean and organized layout that I really like. Heading into the settings, we find that there's support for icon packs, unread badges like the ones found on the iPhones, and even some customizable gestures, which you can use to launch apps, use Google Assistant, and even lock the screen. Other options include re-enabling the dock, customizing folders, and hiding applications. It might not be the most highly functional launcher, but I really like the aesthetic. Next up is one that absolutely surprised me, and that is Microsoft Launcher. Its unorthodox approach to the layout of a phone's launcher impressed me, and if only at the same time, slightly confused me. To the left, you've got a personalized feed, almost like Google Now from back in the day. You get a new background every day because Google kind of pings, bings featured backgrounds, and that's pretty neat. And how you get to the app drawer, well, that's kind of funky. In fact, it's all kind of funky, and I honestly really like this fresh approach. You can even get a mini dock draw thing at the bottom, like control center, with some basic functions mapped here so that you don't have to reach up to the notification shade slash quick settings toggles. Neat. Cortana is naturally built in, and whilst it's cool to have there, I guess, I'm not gonna use it, so it's kind of irrelevant to me. There are some cool customizable gestures here, as well as a pinch, two finger swipe, and double tap. You can hide apps, switch themes, and change all the scaling options, just like a standard launcher too. And overall, I think it's impressive considering Microsoft's infamous reputation in the software space over recent years. Niagara is a new and unreleased launcher in early access, and it honestly looks and feels very different to a typical launcher. It integrates the app drawer right into the home screen with this alphabet thing on the right, allowing you to search by first letter with absolute ease. Getting in and out of the app drawer is easy though because you just flick to the bottom or the top, with the latter giving you the most frequently used and favorited applications. Our compact support is featured here and you can select light or dark themes with an option for the system to just automatically pick it based on your wallpaper. And talking of wallpapers, this launcher comes with access to a drive folder full of exclusively blurred backgrounds. Niagara might not be the most feature packed or most super useful one, but it kind of switches up the layout and makes a phone feel very different compared to using the stock launcher because its fresh approach just completely changes the game. Smart Launcher 5, aside from having an incredibly unimaginative name, is a rather clever launcher for a few reasons. It incorporates Microsoft News to the left, a custom sorted app drawer at the bottom, and a few apps and recent contacts at the top. The smart search function at the bottom is kind of whatever you want it to be and you can search for a lot of things, however I found the feature rather useless since I just used button navigation. There's a custom icon pack on the main home screen which kind of threw me off at first, but I soon found my way and realised that it was just a skin. Themes are available, icon packs are supported, and there's even Wally support built in, which I really like. And for those of you who don't know, the Wally app is the one I use to get all of my phone wallpapers. There are plenty of sizing and scaling options. However, in terms of raw compatibility, I have to say that this one's just a little bit limited. Less phone is for you pure minimalists out there. It gives you, well, nothing really. You get three custom set apps, a to-do list, and that's it. It's honestly really strange and I think it would really work well for someone trying to get out of the habit of procrastination as you genuinely can't do anything else and it limits your app rotation to just three apps so they have to be crucial ones. It's a neat concept and fulfills its purpose but there just aren't a lot of features to talk about. 
there are so many launches on the Play Store and I really want to see what you guys have on your device. So tweet me at this at handle thing and I want to see your launcher setups. I know a lot of people will use Launcher and that's a very popular one, of course Nova. But I also want to know in the comments what, what kind of launchers you'd like to see maybe in another video or just which launchers you use because obviously there are so many out there I can't fit them all into a five video, top five video like this one. Again, I am really sorry for leaving it so long making a video. I'm currently working on another kind of fresh eyes look at this guy. Uh, but the, yeah, there's just a lot going on and I don't think I can really mainly talk about it yet, but I would like to talk about it in the next couple of weeks and hopefully that will kind of paint a picture as to why I'm not here. Anyway guys, that's about it from me. Thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. Also check out my social medias and all links, they'll all be in the video description as always. And keep to keep up to date, I do recommend following me on Twitter at this handle again. My name's been Ryan Thomas and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.